Dr. Jason Saunders here with HBOT USA. I want to cover a concept here about uh, how hyperbaric works from the standpoint that a lot of people think, you know, hyperbaric oxygen cures everything. And, you know, while it does have a lot of different effects, it certainly doesn't cure everything. But what it does do is it delivers oxygen, which is, you know, a nutrient that our body requires for function. And it's, it's a tool that allows us to massively increase that oxygen level, the oxygen absorption, creating a surplus of oxygen inside of our body. And then our body does with that oxygen, the same thing it does with the oxygen it's getting now, except that it's finally given this extra amount of oxygen to do more of what it normally does. So we see an increase in cell function. The types of improvements that we see from hyperbaric oxygen are very related to the cell that's experiencing the increased oxygen. So if it's a liver cell, the liver increases its performance. If it's an intestinal cell, the intestine increases its performance. If it's a brain cell, the brain increases its performance. So um, what I wanna do today is I wanna go over the 10 main changes that we see uh, during uh, hyperbaric exposure so that you can understand why we hear such a, a wide array of conditions that respond so favorably to, uh, to hyperbaric oxygen, whether it's short term or long term. Okay, so here are the 10 main uh, changes, benefits, effects that we see as a result of hyperbaric. So we're just going to go through quickly one at a time. Increased perfusion. In other words, right away, as a result of being exposed to hyperbaric oxygen, uh, the, there's a gradient that is created. There's an increase in oxygen concentration and an increase in oxygen pressure. And as long as there's an increase in gradient, more oxygen is able to dissolve past our alveola, the, the little air sacs in our lungs, and dissolve not just into our red blood cells the way we normally carry oxygen, but literally dissolve into the plasma of our blood, which normally does not carry oxygen, but under hyperbaric uh, conditions, the plasma becomes a carrying device for oxygen. So this increase in uh, pressure and oxygen gradient creates an increase in diffusion. That increase in diffusion allows our liquid, our plasma to hold oxygen. And therefore immediately as a result of being in the hyperbaric environment, we could start to see increased perfusion an increase in oxygen absorption into our blood and that oxygen is free floating and could literally go anywhere in our body that it needs to go. Next we see angiogenesis. This is a little bit more of one of those long-term changes but especially when we have an injury, TBI, concussion, uh, chronic inflammation, things where uh, blood flow has become an issue for whatever reason, damage to the microcirculation, Step one in regaining function is increased perfusion because that's giving us oxygen right away. But step two is angiogenesis, literally building new blood vessels so that our blood vessels can heal, the micro uh, circulation damage can heal. We can create an, a whole new network of capillaries so that once the hyperbaric treatments are over and these new pathways exist, the body can now continue to oxygenate on a regular basis even without the hyperbaric condition. Next is vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction, sometimes people think right away, oh, that's not good because now we're gonna decrease blood flow. Well, there's two pieces to this. One is, yes, vasoconstriction will, uh, will create a decrease in blood flow, but now if this is very specifically due to some type of injury or trauma, we want a decrease in uh, blood flow, we want a, a bit of a vasoconstriction effect because what that's also going to do is it's going to decrease the leakiness of the vessels. And so if there is swelling and edema, that vasoconstriction could massively decrease the effects of the swelling and edema to that localized area. So to some degree, it's actually a good thing that we're getting some vasoconstriction, especially in those scenarios. Now, even with vasoconstriction, we're not compromising oxygen delivery. Under normal circumstances, when all we have is oxygen carrying in a red blood cell and we vasoconstrict, therefore less blood is flowing, therefore decrease in red blood cells means decrease in oxygen. In this case, because we're, we're, we're dissolving so much oxygen into the liquid, into the plasma of the blood, even though there's a vasoconstrictive effect, we're still actually uh, massively increasing the oxygen that's flowing in that blood. Therefore, we're not losing oxygen delivery as a result of this type of vasoconstriction. 
Next is wound healing. Wound healing is one of the most commonly understood and well-known uh, benefits or effects of hyperbaric oxygen. With wound healing, it plays so many roles, which we're going to cover in here, but you know, chronic wounds don't heal for multiple reasons. One, the, the, the oxygen tension is too low. We need a certain amount and pressure of oxygen in our blood vessels in order to promote a healing response. So again, some of these are covered later on, but this hyperbaric oxygen is going to increase perfusion. It's going to increase angiogenesis. So it's going to rebuild the blood flow. It's going to create a stem cell release. It's going to have an antimicrobial effect. So the wound healing piece actually is covered through so many of these components. But the, the main thing to understand here is that a chronic wound has terrible blood supply. And if you have bad blood supply, you can't get nutrients to that area in order to feed it for it to heal. And you can't get waste products away from that area to clear out the chronic inflammation. And hyperbaric helps with many factors, which we'll cover, but very specifically also helps deliver the nutrition and remove the uh, waste products, the elimination from that same traumatic uh, area. Next is nerve healing. Similarly, uh, the nerves need a massive amount of oxygen. Your brain needs a massive amount of oxygen. So anytime that there's damage to the microcirculation of the body, you're going to have a decrease. If there's nerves in that area, you're going to have a decrease in neuro functioning because the nerves can't function at a high rate. They can't have great connections and synapses if they're not being fed tons of oxygen. So with microcirculation damage, we're going to have decreased nerve function. And as we reperfuse and recreate uh, you know, circulation and the, the microcirculation, specifically the capillary networks, we're going to allow for an increase in either nerve healing, uh, whether that's peripheral nerve or nerve hearing, uh, healing even central nervous system and brain. So either one or both of those categories are helped a lot as a result of hyperbaric oxygen and that increased uh, oxygen surplus that hyperbaric delivers to our body. Next is stem cell release. Part of the reason that nerves heal, part of the reason that brain tissue heals after uh, especially trauma or concussion uh, is that after, or even muscles and bones, uh, as a result of hyperbaric oxygen, especially again, this is one of those longer term uh, effects of, or benefits of hyperbaric oxygen, we can get a, up to an eight times increase in both stem cells for our musculoskeletal system from the bone marrow, as well as uh, stem cell release from our central nervous system. So as a result of those, you know, 20 to 40 hours of hyperbaric oxygen, that longer term benefit is this upregulation and mobilization of stem cells from our bone marrow and from our brain for increased healing. Next, increased in white blood cell function. And so well-documented also in the research is uh, an increase in neutrophil and macrophage specifically activation. And so especially in some of these chronic wounds or these subacute chronic infections, our immune system is tired. It's fighting and fighting. And what we'll see on a lab is we'll see in a chronic infection, you'll see a, a low white blood cell count. It's just that the army is running out of steam. And so one of the amazing effects, especially again, this is one of those longer term uh, benefits of hyperbaric oxygen is an upregulation of neutrophil and macrophage activation. And so we get this uh, new energy into the immune system to allow the immune system to fight that fight that it needs. Mitochondrial changes, and there are a lot, but just to cover them quickly, as a result of hyperbaric oxygen exposure, what we're going to see in the mitochondria is an increased efficiency of ATP production. So the mitochondria is where cellular energy is made. Cellular energy, we're going to call ATP. And so as an increased uh, oxygenation to the mitochondria, a benefit of that is an increased turnover or production of ATP. And so as it turns out, oxygen could be considered one of the rate limiting uh, steps in ATP production. And as we increase, as we create that surplus of oxygen, we can create an increase in ATP production. Now, that's going to happen right away. That's one of the short-term benefits of hyperbaric exposure. Longer term, what we're going to see is, as a result of this, if the body doesn't feel like it's using up all that oxygen, we're going to see changes like increased mitochondrial size, increased mitochondrial shape, and increased in mitochondrial density. The body's going to recognize the fact that there's this excess oxygen that it's not utilizing all of, 
and the mitochondria are literally gonna grow in size and in density in terms of in number, so that we're gonna have more mitochondria, larger mitochondria to really take in that oxygen and to start turning over cellular uh, energy so that we could upregulate cell function at a, at a really massive rate. And so that's one of the most amazing benefits of hyperbaric oxygen, specifically because we know that so much chronic illness and chronic disease today relates back to mitochondrial dysfunction. So the more avenues we have to address mitochondrial function, and there are many, but hyperbaric oxygen is one of the most powerful to do that. Next is the anti-inflammatory effect. So basically also, you know, all of these are very well documented in the research, and I will list uh, studies in the description so that you can go ahead and check out some of these studies. But um, this anti-inflammatory, so basically we have these chemicals, they're called cytokines, and some of these chemicals are very pro-inflammatory, and some of them are anti-inflammatory, and some of them are called regulatory. And what that means is they help guide the rest of the immune system to you know, should we be sort of attacking this or should we be very inflamed or should we dial this back, calm down and let our anti-inflammatory system kick into gear. And so one of the main effects of hyperbaric oxygen is a down-regulation of the inflammatory cytokines and an upregulation of the regulatory and anti-inflammatory cytokines. So again, when we're talking about chronic illness and chronic disease specifically, we're talking about in general, these people have massively increased inflammatory cytokines that are just kind of running out of control and they're not responding to a lot of the traditional therapies. Hyperbaric oxygen is one of those things naturally that will reduce the inflammatory cytokine cascade, increase the anti-inflammatory cytokine cascade, and increase the regulatory cytokine cascade to allow for better balance within the immune system and the inflammatory response. And then lastly, antimicrobial. A lot of the pathogens, the bad guys, the bad bugs, the infections, that create a lot of the problems for our body are considered anaerobes. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. What that means is they're infections, they're bacteria that live in either very low or almost no oxygen. Also, a lot of these bacteria protect themselves in these biofilms. And these biofilms allow as a protective layer so that uh, either our immune system can't get to them, but even uh, traditional medicine like antibiotics and things like that can't get to the infection because they have this covering around them this biofilm. And so hyperbaric oxygen has a few effects here. One, most of these pathogens, like I said, are anaerobic. And what that means is if they get exposed to really high levels of oxygen, they die. And we know this because even in hospitals with a patient with gangrene or osteomyelitis, these really terrible infections that are anaerobes, one of the treatments traditionally is hyperbaric oxygen. At the same time, there are dozens and dozens of other anaerobes that affect our body that hyperbaric oxygen would be great for to help balance the immune system and help kill those infections. And so we get an upregulation of uh, our neutrophils and macrophages, like I said earlier, in terms of white blood cell function. So we get a better fight. And at the same time, if we expose those pathogens to high oxygen environments, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna literally um, kill the infections. It acts like an antimicrobial to these anaerobes. At the same time it's doing that, most of our probiotic, most of the good bacteria that live in our body are either aerobic, meaning they love oxygen and function really well in a high oxygen environment, or they're at least considered oxygen tolerant, meaning it doesn't, they don't care either way, whether it's a higher or a lower oxygen environment, they're just happy to be there. So what this means is, again, when we're talking about balance, it's not only going to help decrease the infection load of the anaerobe, it's also gonna increase the strength and diversity of our aerobes and our oxygen tolerant bacteria. And so we're gonna to start to see a nice balance between the bacterial cultures that live you know, in us and on us. As many of you probably know, we have more bugs, more bacteria, viruses, molds, fungus that, uh, that live inside of us or on our body than we have cells that make us up. So again, multiple strategies for trying to balance our microbiome is critical. Hyperbaric oxygen happens to be one of those tools that could play a huge role in that balance. Lastly, back to that biofilm, there are studies now that show that high oxygen environment actually helps to break down that uh, biofilm layer, making either our own immune system more able to get in there to to kill that infection and or to make it more effective for certain antibiotics to get through that layer and also kill that infection. So either way, as we break down that biofilm, 
we're going to have exposure to the bug, which allows whatever therapy, other therapy we're trying to use, become more effective. So anyway, here's the 10 most, uh, I think, most important, most common, most well-documented changes that we see as effective hyperbaric oxygen. As you can see, if you think these through for, uh, you know, throughout different types of conditions, you're going to see these same uh, these same benefits, these same effects showing up over and over again. So back to what I was saying when I started, it's not that hyperbaric cures all kinds of different conditions. That's not how it works. But hyperbaric does do these 10 things and it does these 10 things very well. And when we have these things in our favor, moving our system toward a healthier version, we start to see a lot of changes in these chronic illnesses, this chronic inflammation, and a lot of these conditions that we're trying to help patients with. Thanks a lot.